Hello and welcome back to Civil Engineering with Amir. In the previous example, we analyzed this overhanging beam with a total length of 14 feet, determined the shear force and bending moment as functions of x, and based on those functions, we were able to draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams for the overhanging beam. Now, in this example, we have the same overhanging beam with a total length of 14 feet, but instead of those 250 pound point loads, we have a counterclockwise moment applied at the left end and a clockwise moment applied to the right end, both with a magnitude of 200 pound foot. And now the question wants us to determine the shear force and bending moment for this beam as functions of x. This question has also been selected from Hibbler's structural analysis. All right, let's start solving the question together. If you watched the previous videos, you know we always start solving the questions by drawing the free body diagram of the beam. So if this is our beam, this is point A, this is point B, we call these two points C and D, we have a counterclockwise 200 pound foot moment here, and a clockwise 200 pound foot moment here, a rectangular load, with a magnitude of 150 pound per foot. At point A, we have a ruler support, so we only have AY, and point B is a pin support, so we have BY and BX. And now in the second step, we should write the equations of equilibrium for this free body diagram and determine these three support reactions. So step two, we'll be writing the equations of equilibrium and determining these support reactions. But before writing the equations of equilibrium, we should first substitute this rectangular load with a single resultant force which is applied at the centroid of this rectangle. We know the magnitude of our single resultant force will be 150 multiplied by six or 900 pound, and it will be applied at the centroid or in the middle of this rectangle or a distance three feet from each of these supports. So this free body diagram here can be substituted by something like this. So this rectangular load was substituted by this single 900 pound point load, which is applied in the middle of this rectangle. Now in the X direction, we have Sigma FX equal to zero this direction. So BX plus, we have no other force in the X direction is equal to zero. This will give us a BX equal to zero. Similarly, in the Y direction, we have AY minus 900 plus BY equal to zero. So AY plus BY will be equal to 900. And if we take the moments around any point along the beam, for example, point B, we can say sigma MB is equal to zero in this direction. So 200 minus AY multiplied by six plus 900 multiplied by three minus 200 will be equal to zero. And this will give us an AY equal to 450 pounds. And now if we put this AY in this equation, we have 450 plus BY is equal to 900. So BY will also be equal to 450 pounds. We also know that instead of writing the equation of equilibrium for moments, we could use the symmetry in this beam. So BX is equal to zero. The geometry of the beam is symmetric. The loading is also symmetric. So the beam is symmetric and AY will be equal to BY. And using this equation, we could say 2AY or 2BY will be equal to 900. So AY and BY will be both equal to 450 pounds. And now in the third step, we should cut the beam at different sections and draw the free body diagrams for each segment. So I'm just going to copy this diagram. BX was equal to zero. AY and BY both equal to 450 pounds. Our first cut section will be somewhere between points C and A. The second one will be somewhere between point A and B. 
And finally, the third one will be somewhere between point B and D. And now for each cut section, you're going to have two cut segments. Our first cut section was between point C and A, or X between 0 to 4. So for this cut section, this will be our left cut segment, and this will be our right cut segment. So our left cut segment will look like this. So we cut the beam at a distance X from the left end. We have V1X downward and M1X counterclockwise. And the right cut segment will look like this. So we cut the beam at a distance X from the left end. The length of our left cut segment was X. The total length of the beam was 14 feet. So the length of the right cut segment will be 14 minus X. So this is 14 minus X. 14 minus X minus this 10 will be 4 minus X. We have V1X upward and M1X clockwise. Our second cut section was between point A and B, or X between 4 to 10. So this will be our left cut segment. This will be our right cut segment. So the left cut segment will look like this. We cut the beam at a distance x from the left end. So this length will be x minus 4. We have v2 downward and m2 counterclockwise. And the right cut segment will look like this. The length of the left cut segment was x. The total length was 14. So the length of the right cut segment will be the total length minus the length of the left cut segment, 14 minus x. 14 minus x minus 4 will be 10 minus x. We have V2 upward and M2 clockwise. And finally, for the third cut section, our cut section was somewhere between point B and D, or X between 10 to 14. This will be our left cut segment, and this one our right cut segment. So the left cut segment will look like this. We cut the beam at a distance X from the left end. So X minus 10 will be the length of this piece. We have V3 downward and M3 counterclockwise. And the right cut segment will look like this. Again, the total length of the beam was 14. The length of the left cut segment was X. So the length of the right cut segment would be 14 minus X. We have V3 upward and M3 clockwise. So these are how our cut segments will look like for each cut section. And now in the final step, or step four, we should write the equations of equilibrium for any of the two cut segments for each cut section and determine their corresponding V and M. So again, for each cut section, we have two cut segments. We should choose one of the two cut segments for each cut section, write the equations of equilibrium for that cut segment, and determine their corresponding V and M. For cut section 1, the left cut segment seems to be easier to analyze than the right cut segment, so I choose the left cut segment for analyzing. For the second cut section, they look pretty much the same, but I prefer to stick to the left cut segment. And for the last cut section, the right cut segment seems to be easier to analyze. So I'm going to choose this one. I will just keep the ones that I want to analyze and remove the other ones. Now for cut section one, if we write sigma fy equal to zero in this direction, we have 
only v1 equal to 0. So v1x will be equal to 0. If we take the moments around this point O, we have sigma mo equal to 0 this direction. So 200 plus m1 will be equal to 0. And this will give us an m1 equal to negative 200 pound foot. So for x between 0 to 4, these are our functions for v1 and m1. Now for x between 4 to 10, we should first substitute this rectangular load with a single resultant force. We know the magnitude of our resultant force will be the area under the rectangular load. So 150 multiplied by x minus 4 will be the magnitude. And the resultant force will be applied in the middle of the rectangle where x minus 4 divided by 2. So this free body diagram can be substituted by this one here. So we substituted this rectangular load with this single resultant force with a magnitude of 115 multiplied by x minus 4. And the resultant force is applied at the centroid of the rectangle where x minus 4 divided by 2. So I'm just going to remove this one and write the equations of equilibrium for this one. If you write sigma fy equal to 0, we have 450 minus 150 multiplied by x minus 4 minus v2x equal to 0. And this will give us a v2x equal to negative 150x plus 1050. If we take the moments around this point O, we can say sigma mo equal to 0 in this direction. We have 200 minus 450 multiplied by this distance, or x minus 4, plus 150 multiplied by x minus 4 multiplied by this distance, or x minus 4 divided by 2, plus m2 will be equal to 0. And this will give us an m2x equal to negative 75x in the power of 2 plus 1050x minus 3200. And finally, for the last cut section, or x between 10 to 14, if you write sigma fy equal to 0, this direction, we have v3x, and we have no other force in this direction. This will give us a v3x equal to 0. If we write sigma m around this point O equal to 0, this direction, we have m3x plus 200 equal to 0. So m3x will be equal to negative 200 pound foot. And now we can summarize our results by these functions here. And using these functions, we'll be able to determine our shear force and bending moment at any point along the beam. All right, now let's draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams using these functions. Okay, for the shear force at point C, we have a free end and no external shear force is applied. So the shear force at this point will be equal to zero. For x between zero to four, our shear force will remain equal to zero. So shear force will be equal to zero from zero to four. At x equal to four, we have a positive support reaction equal to 450. So we have to go up. This will be 450 pounds here. From 4 to 10, we have a linear function with a negative slope of 150. So the shear force diagram will look like this. So this will be negative 450. And this point here will be x equal to 7 or right in the middle of the beam. At x equal to 10, we have another positive support reaction with a magnitude of 450. So positive 450 plus this negative 450 will bring us back to shear force equal to 0. And from 10 to 14, our shear force will remain equal to 0. And at x equal to 14, or point D, similar to point C, we have a free end. No external shear force is applied. So the shear force at this end will also be equal to zero. For the moment diagram, at x equal to zero, 
or point C, they have a counterclockwise or negative external moment with a magnitude of 200 pound foot. So we have to go down. This is negative 200. For x between 0 to 4, our moment will remain constant equal to negative 200. For x between 4 to 10, we have a quadratic function. Since our shear force at x equal to 7 was equal to 0, if we put this x equal to 7 in this function, we will have m7 equal to 475 pound foot. And also, if we solve mx equal to 0 at two points between 4 to 10, or x equal to approximately 448 foot, and x equal to approximately 952, the moment will be equal to 0. So somewhere here and here, and at x equal to 7, the moment was equal to 475, somewhere around here. Now, if we draw this function, we're going to have something like this. This is also negative 200. And finally, from 10 to 14, the moment will remain constant at this negative 200 pound foot. And at x equal to 14, point D, we have a clockwise or positive external moment with a magnitude of 200. So positive 200 plus negative 200 will bring us back to moment equal to zero. This was 475. This is x equal to 448. And this is x equal to 952. So these are how your shear force and bending moment diagrams will look like for this overhanging beam. And if we draw these diagrams in MATLAB or any other computer programs, they will look like this. That's it. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful and informative. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit the like button. If you have any comments, suggestions, questions, or feedback, feel free to write for us in the comment section. And finally, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please support us by hitting the subscribe button on the right corner. Thanks again and see you in the next video.